You are listening to the Digital Barbell Podcast. Our mission is to provide you with a clear path to health and fitness through education, coaching, and accountability. We are your hosts, Jonathan and Blakely Fletcher, and we are here to serve you. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe to this podcast and leave us a five-star review so that we can reach more people. You can find us daily on Instagram and Facebook at Digital Barbell. Now, let's get to today's topic. All right, so today we have the pleasure of having um, who I would first consider to be a dear friend of Blakely and ours, and then also he is a client of Digital Barbell right now. We have Benson Ledbetter on the show today, and I really just wanted to get his perspective on uh, exercise. We're going to talk about his experience with training and nutrition and uh, just kind of learn from his experiences. So uh, everybody say hi to Benson. Benson, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, as Jonathan mentioned, my name's Benson Ledbetter. Middle name Benson, first name Jimmy. So I'm one of those guys. Uh, born and raised in a small town in Alabama. Uh, moved to Houston over 17 years ago with my lovely wife, Christina. And uh, yeah, that, that's kind of me. Uh, I'm an engineer. Uh, I have had a variety of hobbies over the years. And uh, I've been friends with Jonathan Blakely for a long, long time now. Yeah, Benson and I actually met through an internet forum back in, I guess it would have been about 2002. Does that sound about, about right? About there, yeah, 2002, 2003, somewhere around there. Yeah, that was back when I was in real estate full-time, just getting started, and Benson had an interest in it, and we met through that. So uh, you could kind of say like we met in a chat room. We, we met online. We met online <laughs> before everybody met online. Yeah. So you said um, you've had a variety of hobbies. Tell us about the one that you're most into right now, because I think a lot of our listeners would like to hear about that. Mm, yes, yes, yes. So I, I really enjoy uh, making, uh, I guess you'd say, generally fermented beverages. Right now, my focus is on beer. I've made wine. I've made cider. I've made hard lemonade. I call it hardly lemonade. Uh, uh, yeah, so I, I, that's what I'm into. I, like I mentioned, I'm a I think I mentioned I'm an engineer, and so what that means is uh, uh, the kind of building aspect of it is very interesting to me, not just the biological fermentation side of it. So I've just wrapped up building a mostly automated brewery with uh, microcontrollers. It's it's uh, controlled. Uh, I, I, anywhere I have internet access, I could control the brewery, and so yeah, uh, that's what I'm into right now, and Prior to that, it's been triathlons, running. Yeah, uh, we're just, definitely going to talk about all that. Yeah. Benson's being modest, too, because he makes really, really tasty beer. He's won awards. He's had his beer commercially made in Houston, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, he's being modest. So um, let's talk a little bit about your your past as far as athletics go. Did What did you do, if anything, as a kid athletically? So in elementary school, I played some baseball, uh, but then when I got into middle and high school, I got into basketball. Basketball was really the only athletic uh, endeavor that I had uh, in those years. And uh, being a whopping five foot seven, I uh, didn't really have uh, much longevity past high school <laughs> in basketball. Uh, but uh, a after that, uh, the college years ensued and I was not very... Uh, active, uh, uh, ate a lot of cheeseburgers and packed on some LBs. Uh, but then finally, when I transferred into, uh, I went to Georgia Tech, uh, moved to Atlanta, and that's when I started kind of getting into more of the fitness thing. Started riding mountain bikes, found cycling to be enjoying, and then uh, eventually, I, when we moved to Houston, I uh, got tired of doing the kind of the gym rat thing. It was kind of boring. Uh, so I found out I need something with a goal and that's what got me into triathlons. I was not necessarily the fastest, uh, at any of the three, but I find that when you're, um, uh, mediocre at all of them, you can actually do pretty good <laughs> in the races. Yeah. What was your first, um, what kind of got you interested in triathlons? Had you done any in college or do you have a friend who did them? I, I, 
I'll be honest. I don't really remember. Bought magazine I, at the grocery store. That that that's probably probably something like that. Magazine in a grocery store. Yeah, I enjoyed running. Yeah. I have more of a a runner's build than than anything. I'm kind of kind of slight, kind of lean, and uh, so yeah, I just started doing that. Um, what was the first one you did? I did a race down in Sugarland. Uh, I distinctly remember the swim portion of this race. I've never done a mass start swim, but as I'm I'm going along, I, I look up to take a breath, and I, it's a it's in a neighborhood. I think it was Silver Lake Triathlon. That's in, Pear, in Pearland. Yeah, uh, Pearland. That's it. That's I, right. I think we might have gone to see you do that race. I I think you did. I think you did. Yeah, yeah. Now that I, now that I think, yeah, Silver Lake, Pearland. Uh, but as I'm swimming along in the neighborhood uh, pond, I go out to take a breath and I see a, a duck turd float past my goggles. <laughs> and I was hooked. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember right, that pond was probably dyed some color, like blue or green also. Which it was, yeah. It have had detrimental health effects still unknown. Possibly, yeah. But after I did that, I was like, this is the thing for me. I you know, I was just getting started and I did okay. And then mm -hmm. the next thing you know, I'm like, I'm, I don't dabble in hobbies. So this became a hobby that I didn't dabble in. I went headlong into it and did it for years and years. Uh, I did it to, um, to such an extent that it actually became detrimental to my marriage. And uh, I had to start dialing back. So yeah, tell us about kind of, I remember you training for those in your house. Tell us about the way that you trained for those in your house. Yeah, so uh, the cycling is, a, is the largest volume component of it. So I needed to, uh, in my house for instance, I needed to find a way, how do, how do I go about training for this without having to be gone for six, seven, eight hours? So I set up a, a room in our house with a laptop and an indoor trainer and I would clamp my bicycle into it and I would ride for three, four hours and just watch movie after movie. I watched uh, Lost. I watched the whole Lost series on a stationary bicycle and a lot of people hate stationary cycling but uh, I find it uh, actually okay if you uh, just pop in some movies and some headphones. So I would do a lot of that. I would, I would set it up and uh, do bricks. So I would cycle, do a sprint and then go out and run and cycle and do a sprint. So, do stuff like that. Yeah. So some people might know that you can actually take your regular road bike and you can bring it in your house, put it on a stand mm -hmm. and ride your regular bike in your house without buying a, uh, you know, a air bike or something, a spinning bike, something like that. Yeah. Don't need to, don't need to buy a Peloton. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. When you, those, those bike stands, does it both wheels stay on your bike or does one of them come off? Like, do you take the front wheel off or does it stay on? They have different kinds. The one that I had was a very old one, uh, but it was fantastic. So I would remove my front tire and clamp it in. So it was held stationary. The back wheel would uh, then rotate it up. What's essentially a, a variable resistance fan. Okay. Uh, but now uh, some of the newer ones, you don't have to take anything off. You just bring your bike, clamp in. And then if you're really, really good, you actually ride on rollers. Oh so yeah, I've seen just, that. yeah. Yeah, it's just little bitty rolling pins, and you just cycle away. You don't stop pedaling. <laughs> There's probably some good fail videos on YouTube of people trying those in their house. There are, especially with this pandemic uh, being what it is. Everybody, all the people that ride bikes are having to ride indoors, or yeah. you know, the professionals, and even they crash. So it's yeah. pretty good. Did you see the guy who ran an ultra marathon on a treadmill in his apartment? <laughs> no. The treadmill. Ugh. I love running. I hate running on treadmills. Yeah, you, we have that in common, but I just hate running in general. So, so how long did you do the triathlons um, and how many did, did you remember how many you did? I remember averaging around one a month or so during the wow. summer months. So like between say May and call it September, October time frame, I, I would do about one a month. Uh, and then I did it for pro for approximately, I'm going to say, six, seven years, something like that. Okay, so and, what year would that have been up until you moved on to something different? Do you remember about? 
I, I remember distinctly what it is because once I, uh, so what happened in 2000 and 2009 would have been really the last real year that I was competitive. So 2009, I qualified for age group nationals in triathlon. Uh, so at that point, I was given the green light to go compete on the national stage for U.S. national stage. And I was going to go to um, back to my home state, Alabama. And my family was going to come in and watch me race. And that would have been, I qualified 2009. I was going to race uh, 2010. Um, so anyhow, what happened, or maybe I, no, maybe I qualified 2010. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what happened is that I joined work uh, at a new company. And that work was very, very demanding. It required a lot of my time. I ended up postponing my enrollment for age group nationals to the next year. And uh, so that would have been 2010. I postponed it till 2011. Uh, and but work never let up. <laughs> As it does. And, years. Yeah. So uh, I just I had to kind of give it up. It was I, I I really didn't have a choice in the matter. I, I tried to make it work, but it just required so much time, energy, and effort. Balance that with work. That balance that with trying to be a good husband. Uh, and so something had to give. And triathlon uh gave way yeah uh, do you remember uh, do you remember what you guys uh, you and christina were doing um or what your kind of approach to nutrition was at this point because i have a vague memory but i could be wrong uh so during this time it would have been pretty normal just healthy eating we had not tried anything vegetarian or vegan or anything at this time. okay um and so it was you know, lean meats, lean, lean proteins, uh, and we probably ate more garbage than more processed food than what we do now. Uh, yeah. Probably, I would imagine our sugar con consumption was much higher then. Yeah. And what was your, what would you say, like your body composition was like from your uh, endurance training and and doing the triathlons and the way you were eating? Um, <clears throat> I was very lean. I I, I would not say that I was skinny fat I was just skinny <laughs> uh, and I actually I think even got thinner uh, after I quit doing triathlons I really got heavy primarily into running and as you know uh, running I was running probably 50 miles a week or so and so you can burn through a lot of calories running <laughs> uh, and so my, my racing weight was you know like I said I'm five seven my racing weight was ideally just under 130 pounds Wow. Uh, You're in your is, early 30s at this point. Yeah, that's right. That's mm -hmm. right. And so I look back on pictures. Oh, wait a minute. I got a, I got a picture right here. You, you may not be able to tell much of a difference. But. <laughs> yeah, you can tell the difference. Look at your arms and your shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> so that's when I was doing a lot of training and I was, I looked sick. Yeah. And by I really did. Is, you know, mostly, well, I guess 100% cardiovascular. Cardiovascular, all cardiovascular type stuff. And not just long, slow distance. I was doing everything. I was sprinting. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I mean, I, I was doing all that. But I was, I was faster than I'd ever had been, so I didn't care. Uh, and it, for a sport. Yeah, yeah. And at that point, once I, once I stopped doing triathlons and we started – figuring out more about diet and everything is when I transitioned to being uh, a vegan and we did that for a while so when we transitioned to being vegan like within just a few months I got way faster than I ever had been don't know why that's just what happened I just started getting faster and faster and faster and I was like, this is this is great yeah. <laughs> free speed just for not eating <laughs> animal protein right so this would have been you were not competing at that point this was just when you were running just when I was running, and I would compete some in running, but okay. uh, not a not a whole lot. Yeah. So, um, what came next after the triathlons and the running? So after the triathlons and the running is when we decided to start uh, getting into CrossFit. Our thinking was uh, that I was so busy at work, uh, I was having to drive out to Mount Bellevue every day and back. <clears throat> we just didn't have a whole lot of time together. It's for a construction project, so the hours were really long. CrossFit Gym opened up just right around the corner from our house, and we we're like, hey, this will give us an actual shared activity because we don't run the same speeds, we don't cycle the same, we're just generally weren't interested in the same things. 
we thought we'd give CrossFit a try as a shared activity. And, and it was great. We did that for, and we were members of that gym for, I don't know, four years or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, still really appreciate everything that they're, they're great people. Love, love the fact that the gym's still open right around the corner. Uh, so yeah, we did that for a while, made a lot of good friends, uh, gained a lot of knowledge. Uh, and at that point, you know, I think my, I, here's a, here's a fun factoid. <laughs> when we started going there, my back squat, my one rep max back squat was 60 pounds less than when I was in college, my one rep max bench press. <laughs> So to put that in perspective, most adult men should be able to back squat substantially more than they can bench press. That's right. And I was squatting 60 pounds less than my bench press from college. So you had previous weightlifting experience from college? Yeah, in, in college, you know, it's when you want the, uh, the physique. Uh, you and your buddies, you go in there, you have a bro sessions. <laughs> I was doing that and I was mountain biking and still eating like yeah. still eating garbage. I, I, one summer I worked at Six Flags over Georgia and I would eat, I would stop by Wendy's and get four junior bacon cheeseburgers and eat those through the day. Only four? Just four. I mean, that, that was just like a portion of the day. That was after breakfast and lunch. And then for dinner, I would have four junior bacon cheeseburgers. Yeah. Just hold you over. <laughs> It's just a time over till I got home. <laughs> it was yeah. horrible. It was I think horrible. we had that experience from when we were in our 20s. Yeah. 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 So you had previous weightlifting experience from college. Nothing structured or organized, it sounded like. Um, so what changes did you see physically, mentally from doing CrossFit, if any? Uh, so a- after CrossFit or because of CrossFit, during your four years of doing CrossFit. Yeah. Um, I thought, I found it extremely enjoyable to do that. And I still think I would enjoy going to a gym. And the primary reason is because I, I find that I'm a little competitive. And so that's why I enjoyed racing so much. That's what I'm, that's why I went headlong into triathlons. Cause I was like, it was just so much fun just to compete and compare and go against head to head. And so like every day at, at the CrossFit gym, there was a little bit of that. It's not like we were, uh, you know, we didn't, uh, there was no metal being handed out, but no. Uh-uh. And we didn't dislike each other. It was just this genuine kind of like fun thing to do to see if you could beat so-and-so or you would start hiding someone like, hmm, am I, how fast are they going to go? And, uh, <laughs> So anyhow, it, you know, it always made me feel good when it was just like a bunch of body weight moves, like, like, like Cindy. Like I was, man, I could crank that out. Uh, Plays up to all your strength. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, CrossFit was, it was a lot of fun. I, I got a lot of good education from the coaching that happened there. Uh, now I, you know, I understand proper form for doing a power clean and a jerk and I've never done any of those Olympic style moves that at best I had done squats and bench press and things yeah. like that but anything that was more dynamic I hadn't done any of that so a lot of good education uh, <clears throat> what about when we what physical changes did you notice in your strength and body oh I got a lot stronger uh, but I didn't really Surprisingly, I didn't gain a lot of weight doing that because I, I, I'm not sure why, but I'm guessing because there was uh, so much cardiovascular work that happened during that. I, like I said, I would uh, be, my racing weight would be under 130 when I was just doing cardio. When I started doing CrossFit consistently, uh, I, maybe I got up to like uh, 135 to 138 pounds. So I'd only gained five to eight pounds, even though I was doing a lot more resistance training Mm -hmm. um so change nutritionally during those years at at some point we were still eating vegan to begin with but at some point i realized that i'm just like i'm hungry all the stinking time uh so you know i have no um moral qualms about eating animals uh growing up in rural alabama (laughs) 
Um, so, uh, you know, we started, we started introducing a little bit more animal protein into the diet and, uh, and drinking some protein shakes and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I, I liked it. It was, it was a lot of fun. My, I would say my work capacity increased greatly uh, when it comes to moving weights for a certain amount of time. Uh, I obviously, because I wasn't specializing, uh, I got slower uh, from a purely cardiovascular running type thing, but I could still, you know, really red line and hold it out there on that red line. Yeah. More than the average person. Yeah, that makes sense. You, you were training that routinely for a long period of time. So you got a lot better at it. Yeah. Yeah. So you stopped going to the CrossFit gym eventually and what came next? Uh, we, so we stopped going to the CrossFit gym. We purchased our, uh, well, we outfitted our garage to be a CrossFit gym. So yeah. made all those necessary purchases and we started kind of doing our own thing. I'm trying to remember when I started working with you guys. It was not too long after that. I don't think, uh, do you remember? Um, it's probably been two, two and a half years at this point. That sounds about right. Maybe two years. Yeah. Yeah. That um, sounds about right. But there was an interruption in that because you moved, right? Oh, uh, the India move. Yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, that's right. So after that, we started working with you and I, had, I did it, I guess you'd say freelance for a little bit. I kind of did my own thing for, for a little while, surfing the internet, finding workouts. Uh, and yeah. then Cat is making a guest appearance back there out of the box. Yeah, excuse the mess. We're kind of staging to head out to Wimberley. So. Yeah. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, so, no, so it's you okay. Moved to India, India for your job. Yeah, moved to mm -hmm. India for my job. And we didn't really know what to expect when we got there. Uh, thankfully, the uh, apartment complex that we uh, lived in had a very nice gym uh again every, everything's relative but it was it was good i had the major components of what you would need i had to be i found out that i had to be careful with some of the equipment because it was uh the tolerances weren't quite what you would have in the u.s for instance <laughs> right. the, the bar was a little uh you know shaky and so i ended up hurting my back out there and, this was my rogue fitness equipment yeah, not, not, not quite, but still is sufficient. I was able to maintain, I, I would say I'd switch to more like maintenance mode while we were there because uh, just being in a different country, it was unfamiliar, culturally it was unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. uh, the foods weren't familiar. So it was hard to kind of adjust to that. Uh, like I mentioned, the equipment, I was trying to figure out how best to deal with that yeah. and do, do the programming, um, that I need to do, yeah. um, ran a so lot on the kind of a, a period of adjustment of trying to maintain the fitness that you had built up through, you know, all the, the years of endurance work, the years you put in at the CrossFit gym and then the carryover from working out at home. What, uh, tell everybody about kind of the challenges you had from a nutrition standpoint, moving to a foreign land. Yeah. So it is, it, it is interesting. We uh, we ate a lot of salad and a lot of chicken, <laughs> a lot. Uh, and so I'd say, what's that? What, what what cut of the chicken do they eat there? Well, we were able to find chicken breast, but other challenges that come with this are uh, you can't just buy buy the produce at the grocery store and come home and give it a quick rinse and eat it. So uh, th this is going to sound like, by U.S. standards, it's going to sound like we're fancy people, but we actually had a housekeeper. Uh, most people there have, have a housekeeper. So what's that? That's normal. I mean, my dad lives in Thailand. Sally lives in Hong Kong. They both have live-in housekeepers. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the housekeeper, she would go buy her produce for us and then she would come back and she, it wasn't just a quick run. She actually like cleaned it. You have to cl deep cleaning like this vinegar water solution, clean all that. So it wasn't just like things were easy. So 
uh, the grocery stores are different. Uh, things are located. Uh, sometimes they don't have stuff that you want. And uh, for instance, uh, say you want a, a can of beans. Uh, a, a can of beans is like $5 there, and here it's like 50 cents. Yeah. Uh, avocados are hard to find. Uh, but mangoes are all over the place. <laughs> we, ate, we ate so many mangoes. Oh, my gosh. We became mango experts. So just so everybody knows, like um, – we weren't working together on nutrition coaching or anything like that. You already, you know, through, if you're a member of a CrossFit gym, uh, invariably the new, the topic of nutrition comes up a lot. So you already had a, and, and you actually got your CrossFit level one certification, which has a large nutrition component. So you had a, a, a good understanding of what proper nutrition looked like going into this. So, um, I mean, eventually you probably got sick of chicken, what would you say, you know, thinking about how you eat now that you're back in the States was lacking from your diet during that time? And what effect do you think it had on you physically? Mm -hmm. uh, so variety is one of the hard things. And I also feel like uh, uh, sometimes dark greens could have been harder to find. What we ended up doing, frankly, is we found some place, some restaurants that offered healthy food options and we literally ordered out every night yeah for lunch i would have maybe a like a it was like kind of like a romaine type salad with some chicken on it and seasoning is hard to find and mm -hmm. i'm sorry i'm kind of rambling now what was the what was the question just just thinking about like how the the different way of eat, having to eat over there affected you oh how did it affect me yeah yeah i got you, did you um growth? did you stay the same I, 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 I think I stayed the same. I okay. don't remember it. The needle really. All the mango. It was all, it was all the mango. All the mango I had. All this sugary, just delicious mango. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like I kind of stayed consistent. Uh, I wasn't supplementing with anything other than just daily vitamins. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wasn't, didn't have any protein shakes or right. creatine and, and stuff like that. Uh, so I, I really, it was just kind of like a maintenance. This is, this is what I need to do to maintain fitness this is what I need to do to maintain my nutrition. So it was like I said, a lot of chicken and, and it, we like to splurge on the weekends. We'd end up splurging and get yeah. a, um, a water Buffalo burger with some mac and cheese. I don't even know what that means. A water Buffalo burger <laughs> is it actually made from a water Buffalo. Yes, it is. It tastes like beef. Kind of. <laughs> Game, like gamier beef? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was okay. It was a good substitute for the time. Yeah, and, and you needed something other than chicken after eating chicken every single day. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes, you know, I, there's a little part of me that wonders if I was may, maybe running a little bit of a calorie deficit while I was there. Mm -hmm. I, I just generally don't know if I was uh, eating as much or as many calories as I should have been. Yeah. Uh, here in the U.S., it's no problem. Right. Okay, so let's fast forward. You've moved back to the States. Um, you got your garage gym back. You have more control of your own food. And since that time, I feel like, um, you know, you've been in much more of a rhythm working with us on online training. So um, before we get into your actual training, like, had you ever worked with an online coach before or... Um, what has your, if you have, if you haven't, what has your experience working with an online coach been like so far versus maybe what your perception or mm -hmm. somebody's outside perception might be? Uh, I've never worked with an online coach before. The closest I have come mm -hmm. is uh, I had used a, a, a software program called Training Peaks when I was doing triathlons. And so I wouldn't call that an online coach, but it's more like an on, it was a computer based. You type in your race days. And then it develops a program for you and you just follow that program. I have no problems following the program. So uh, I do like the, the online coach. I really, every day, I look forward to what uh, Blakely types in my workouts. Like it's, it's really fun to see like what she says about the stuff. And I, I usually type something in for her to respond to, or I, I'm, I'm pretty good at documenting what it is that went well, what didn't go well, what I enjoyed. So, so she always has something to, to comment on. Uh, yeah. So it, it's, it's a lot of fun. Now, I think part of it is because I, I have a relationship with you guys mm -hmm. already. 
that's a, that makes it, uh, I think, a little bit more special, a little bit easier. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, never worked with an online coach before. It's, it's great. I like it. I like it a lot. And I know through uh, my experience that uh, if there's something that I need to change, modify, or tweak, that I can. I have enough knowledge that I, I know what typically is an, is an appropriate substitution. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I really like about this is that I feel like I have a, uh, a freedom to make decisions about the workout that is best for me. So I mentioned CrossFit. And I, I still, like I said, I think the CrossFit gym is great and everything. But when I showed up there, my mental state was such that I have to do what is specifically programmed, even though they would not have made me do that. But for instance, if I was just uh, exhausted and I did not need to do eight, 800 meter sprints, now I don't have to do that. I can think of something that's more appropriate for me to do. Whereas if I was going to the CrossFit gym and I would do it and I would just like get after it, even though I might not have needed to stuff. So. Maybe a little bit more flexibility with that. I feel like I have more flexibility to make the decisions that are best for me. I don't feel so locked in. Again, I, I, that's a personal issue that I have. Uh, that makes sense though. I think a lot of people are like that. You know, there's some, there's some people who are just intimidated by the dynamic of a group class because not only are other people watching you um, in real time, but you're you're told what to do and expect to to, to do it. So um, I think people sometimes feel more comfortable working at home and, and the ability to record yourself and send it to your coach without them being there in person, but them also be still being able to give you feedback um, mm -hmm. without the intimidation of being told exactly what to do or a bunch of people watching you do it is something yeah. like that. Yeah. And I also think I'm just, I'm a little older. I'm a little wiser. I'm a little more mature now. Yeah. You know, there's that component as well. I'm just, I do what I need to do uh, to stay healthy. Yeah. So um, you, you've worked with us long enough to, to know kind of now our, our three tier approach or our three part approach to training um, where we incorporate strength training, bodybuilding and um, cardiovascular training through a, a mix of high intensity, medium intensity and low intensity work. How, how do you like that mix? I like it a lot. I like it a whole lot. And and just so everybody knows, Jonathan didn't, pr didn't prime me with this. Like we, we didn't talk, but I, I think it's a fantastic approach. And because sometimes I just need a mental break. Uh, so it is, it's mentally exhausting to day after day after day to just go in and just like pound it out. And so I really appreciate those days where, okay, today all I have to do is move some weight just move this away. And it's not like I have this triplet to do for like 30 minutes. Sometimes it's like that and that's okay. But it's not every day that I'm just like completely laying on the floor panting about to pass out. At some point you just get tired of doing that five, six days a week. Uh, and so I really like the, uh, the approach of the bodybuilding, the cardiovascular and i uh, mixture of intensities i've put on some pounds which is good uh just a little just a little bit ago christina said i came up to get some coffee or something she said you look like a v and i'm like no oh, dog so that's, Do I really? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good segue like what um i mean i've posted pictures of you from probably six months ago versus you 10 years ago and the, the the change over the long term is astonishing, but you know, since you've been kind of religiously following uh, or working with Blakely, like what physical changes have you seen other than gaining some some weight? Uh, so my, well, since we've been all work from home, I'm just wearing <laughs> elastic waistbands, so I don't know if my pants still, but I think they do. Uh, but uh, Christina's always bugging me about my uh, shirts being too small. Uh, and she says I look a little silly sometimes in the shirts. Now, I, and I'm not, I'm not huge. I'm not a big guy. Uh, way now. I'm up to 148 pounds. 
that's a, that's a pretty substantial gain. That's a substantial gain. Yeah. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm stronger now. I think my, my, I think my thighs are bigger. My, my arms are bigger. Yeah. Uh, in, bragging in a good way. To tell the truth. It's okay. What's that? So we, you don't sound like you're bragging. I mean, you're, you're quite more, you're a lot more muscular now than you used to be. I am. I am. And look, like I said, I'm not, I'm not huge. I think I'm in a much healthier place now. It's, it's not that, you know, I, I, I'm not ripped. I'm not any of those. It's just like, I'm, I'm much, yeah. Here, here's, here's the thing. I've, I think I've finally reached a point where uh, I feel like I can age gracefully. I'm 40 years old now and I would like to be able to, you know, in 30 years, still be able to go on hikes with Christina. And at the, if I would have stayed on the path that I was currently on, I would have probably ended up being broken down by the time I was 50. You're talking about the endurance path or the five times a week high intensity path or both? Uh, both. I mean, both of them were just too much. I, I totally can identify with that. I mean, that's one of the the first podcasts that we're going to release. It kind of talks about how we came up with the approach that we have. And it was really just built on um, experiences from our own life that led us to where we're at. And it kind of followed the same path as far as, you know, doing something that was getting us one result and then pulling the, the good part out of that, combining it with the good part of something else, combining it with a good part of something else to ultimately form something that um, we hope for ourselves and for our clients is like something they can maintain as a lifestyle versus, you know, something that's just, they can do temporarily that beats them down, maybe gets them a result, but then the result goes away once they can no longer maintain it. So. Yeah. It, it's a mental grind to go out and do either of those things, those paths that I was headed down, like endurance training is a mental grind and, and just go into a, even the high intensity interval training, like five, six days a week, that is a mental grind. Yeah. So the last thing I want to touch on speaking of mental stuff is um, I know you've dealt with injury in, in your past, in your past and in your recent past. Um, so just kind of like tell everybody what you've learned about your recent experience with um, tweaks, injuries, whatever you want to call it. Um, kind of where you were at when it happened and how you were able to, to deal with it and where you're at now. Sure. So my most recent experience has been uh, back related, um, sciatic nerve related, uh, which is new territory for me. Back injuries in general have been a new territory over the past year. Um, so I had mentioned maybe being a little bit older and wiser a little bit ago. Um, my approach in the past would not have been to temper it quite like I have, but now I've I realized that in order for me to to age gracefully, to do things long term, to be active long term, that whenever I do tweak and injure myself, that I really did I got to pay special attention to that um, and take my time to get better. So this past time I, I injured my back. It was worse than it's ever been. I couldn't get out of bed in the middle of the night. I had to have help, uh, which was, I'd never had that happen before. Fast forward about a week, I'm feeling much better. I'm feeling so much better. So uh, what do I do? I load up the, the barbell on the side. I'm just going to squat. I'm going to squat heavy because I'm feeling better. And I did that and I hurt myself again. And, you know, that was just a few weeks. Ago. Here we are probably five or six weeks later and I'm finally starting to feel less of a tweak. But if I would have just dialed it back, and so I still struggle with it even yeah. today. So um, you and I talked about this personally, but um, and it, I've, got, I've been through the same thing, but when you get hurt, you feel fragile. And you feel like you're never going to get better. Is that yep. your experience too? Yeah, especially, I'm not sure why, but especially back injuries. Mm -hmm. Something. So, and I don't know if it's just because everything that you do, you feel it. But yeah, you just feel fragile. You feel like you're never going to get better. It's easy to get down and out. You just want 
to do normal things, but normal things hurt. Yeah. But I, you know, one of the things we try to help people with is the mental side of an injury. Um, because if you stay in that place of feeling like you're never going to be able to do anything or you're never going to get better and you immobilize yourself, there's a good chance you're going to stay hurt longer than if you take the approach like you talked about earlier and you go ahead and do what you can and you slowly build back up, which is, you know, I think scary for a lot of people um, because those feelings of being fragile are real in that moment. But, you know, yeah. looking back over time, we, we see that, you know, maybe we were being a little bit irrational, but some people just get stuck there and never get past it. So I'm proud of you for, you know, not for going to the extreme and re-injuring yourself, but for getting past that point where we were texting about um, you wondering if you were ever going to be normal again. Like yeah. hopefully on where you're at now, you do realize that eventually you will be back to where you were. It's just, it's just a matter of time and taking the smart. Yeah. I'm still taking it easy. Uh, I, I, I have yeah, a history of doing that. I see your uh, workout blogs that Blakely shows me. You're still killing it. You're being <laughs> It's easy. Yeah, I'm taking it easy. Come on, come on. Um, but yeah, I I have a history of d making bad decisions like this sense. when it comes to work. For me, it's like ah, uh, if I if I don't get this working or if I don't look this way back when I was running, if I don't get this run in, then uh, everything that I've worked for is just gonna disappear. Just poof. And I, I remember I was getting ready to run the uh, Saudi Aramco half marathon. And I missed, I missed a long run. I was supposed to get my long run. And so what I ended up doing was several days back to back of kind of like medium distance runs. I ended up giving myself IT band syndrome. Mm -hmm. I ended up injuring myself. And it was, it was stupid. I, I, I didn't have to do that. And it took me months and months and months to get over that because I didn't want to slow down. I didn't want to give up everything that I'd worked for. Yeah, it's tough. That make that makes you normal. Yeah, and so today, uh, you know, just a few weeks ago, I ended up squatting more. Actually, <laughs> I'm getting better. I'm getting better. That's right. We're all a work in progress. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I really appreciate you doing this. Um, I think a lot of people will be able to identify with different parts of your story, um, and we're happy to be your friend. And uh, we miss you guys. Hope to see you soon. And. Yeah. Uh, Appreciate you coming on here to inspire other people. Thank you all for listening. We truly appreciate it. But real quick, before we go, do us a personal favor and subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a five-star review and be sure and follow us on Instagram and Facebook for the latest and greatest content. If you're interested in working with Blakely and I, we have a few different ways we can help. We offer one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching, 100% custom workout programs based on your goals, and we offer both a 12-week barbell strength building program called Built, as well as a 12-week full body fitness program that can be done at home. We call it Body. Get all the details and reach out to us through the website at digitalbarbell.com. Have a great day.